In the study of contemporary religious practices, particularly magic and witchcraft, Tanya Lerman's work stands out for its depth and insight. Her 1989 book, Persuasions of the Witch's Craft, Ritual Magic in Contemporary England, examines how people in modern rational societies engage deeply with magical practices. Central to her study is the concept of interpretative drift, which describes a gradual shift in how individuals perceive and believe in magic, influenced by factors like gradual change, community dynamics, and cognitive processes. This exploration, grounded in Lurman's ethnographic research, also addresses how skeptical, educated individuals reconcile these beliefs with a secular worldview. In discussing Lurman's interpretive drift, I will also delve into various counter-arguments, offering a comprehensive view of the complexities surrounding belief formation in the context of magic and witchcraft. Before we dive in, I'd love to remind you to sign up for my newsletter. Don't rely on the capricious algorithm and social media platforms that could shut down whenever they decide. By signing up for my newsletter, you will be always up to date with everything that I'm up to, everything that I'm thinking, and get access to exclusive content, pictures, and academic research. You will find the link in the bio, the cards, the info box, and the pinned comment. You will also find all the ways to support Angela's Symposium as this project is brought to you by you. Check out all the services I offer at drangelapuka.com and join my inner symposium on Patreon, Coffee, or YouTube memberships. And thank you to the generous souls who make this project available to all. Now, let the symposium begin. <laughs> Hello, Symposiast. I'm Dr. Angela Puka, Religious Studies PhD, and this is your online resource for the academic study of magic esotericism, paganism, shamanism, and all things occult. In Persuasions of the Witch's Craft, Tanya Lerman offers an interesting ethnographic study of modern magical practices in England. Published in 1989, this book delves into the world of individuals who, despite living in a predominantly rational and scientific society, are deeply engaged in the practice of witchcraft and magic. Central to Lerman's exploration is the concept of interpretative drift, a theory that explains how people gradually shift their perceptions and beliefs to incorporate magical practices into their lives. Lerman's work, based on ethnographic research, provides a detailed look at various magical groups, including Wiccans, the followers of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, and other esoteric traditions in England. She examines how educated and often skeptical individuals reconcile their involvement in these practices with their secular, rational worldview. This reconciliation or interpretative drift is a gradual process influenced by participation in rituals, community dynamics and cognitive changes. However, Persuasions of the Witch's Craft has sparked controversy and debate. Some practitioners and scholars have questioned Lerman's interpretations and conclusions about magical belief systems. As an academic who holds different views on the engagement with magic, I find it crucial to present counter-arguments to Lerman's thesis. This approach hopefully encourages a more nuanced understanding and invites a broader dialogue about the nature of belief in magical practices. For practitioners, Lerman's book is an opportunity to reflect on their practices within the broader context of their daily lives and societal norms. For scholars, especially in anthropology and religious studies, it offers a rich case study of how modern individuals navigate complex belief systems. I invite invite viewers to engage with Lerman's work and the ethnographic context it provides. Whether you agree with her interpretations or not, I encourage you to share your thoughts and experiences in the comments. Let's discuss Lerman's theory and its implications for our understanding of magic and witchcraft in contemporary society. Your insights are invaluable in enriching this conversation and deepening our collective understanding of these enduring and fascinating practices. 
Tanya Lerman's concept of interpretive drift provides a possible framework for understanding how individuals, particularly those with a rational educated background, come to embrace the beliefs and practices of magic and witchcraft. Now let's cover all the elements that are part of this concept of interpretative drift. The first one is incremental nature. Lerman proposes that the adoption of magical beliefs is a gradual process. Consider the process of learning a new language. It's a gradual journey. You don't suddenly wake up fluent in French or English. Tanya Lerman suggests a similar process for adopting beliefs in magic and witchcraft. It's not an overnight transformation. As people engage more with rituals and integrate into magical communities, their worldview begins to shift subtly. For example, someone might initially join a witchcraft group out of curiosity. Over time, as they participate in rituals and interact with fellow practitioners, they might start interpreting certain life events as influenced by magic, a perspective they didn't hold before. Now, to counter argument this point of the interpretative drift by Lerman, we can find that in contrast with Lerman's gradualism, William James in the Varieties of Religious Experience highlights the possibility of sudden transformative religious conversions. Something that I have witnessed myself in my work as an anthropologist on the field. James's observations suggest that belief changes can occur rapidly, challenging the notions of a solely gradual shift. Imagine a scene from a film where a character has a sudden, profound revelation. William James would argue that changes in religious beliefs can happen just like that, quickly and dramatically. James suggests that someone might undergo a sudden transformative experience that completely shifts their beliefs, even just in a second. For instance, a person might have an unexpected mystical encounter or a moment of intense insight, leading them to instantly believe in supernatural phenomena. The second point illustrated by Lerman as part of the interpretative drift theory is the plausibility structures. Lerman identifies that within magical communities, certain social and cognitive frameworks or plausibility structures make specific beliefs seem more credible. These structures, constituted by rituals, teachings and communal experiences, reinforce the worldview of witchcraft and magic, making it more acceptable and real to the practitioners. Imagine you're watching a group of people who believe in the power of crystals. This belief doesn't just come out of nowhere. It's supported by a network of rituals, teachings and shared experiences, what Lerman calls plausibility structures. These structures make the idea of crystals having power seem more believable to those involved. For instance, if everyone in a group talks about how crystals have healed them or brought them good luck, and this is reinforced through books, discussions and rituals, then the idea becomes more plausible and real within that group. Now onto the counter argument. Stark and Brainbridge, in their work The Future of Religion, emphasize the role of individual agency and rational choice in the adoption of beliefs. They argue that individuals might choose beliefs based on personal rationality and perceived benefits, suggesting a more active individualistic approach to belief adoption than the communal and structural emphasis of Lerman. You can think about a person who chooses to carry a crystal because they've read about its benefits and personally think it makes sense. Stark and Brainbridge argue that this kind of individual decision-making plays a big role in what people choose to believe. They suggest that people often pick beliefs based on their own reasoning and what they feel will benefit them rather than just going along with the group. 
This viewpoint highlights a more personal, individual approach to adopting beliefs, as opposed to the group-influenced structures Lerman describes. For example, someone might start using crystals because they've personally researched and concluded that the crystals will help them, not necessarily because their social group believes in them. In fact, it tends to be quite the opposite that people believe in crystals are attracted to them for personal individual reasons and because it works with them and then they seek out groups that align with their views. The third part of Lerman's uh, theory is cognitive dissonance and rationalization. Lerman suggests that practitioners initially experiencing cognitive dissonance due to the conflict between their magical practices and secular beliefs engage in a process of rationalization. This process helps them to reconcile these conflicting views, leading to a syncretic worldview where magic and rationality coexist. For example, someone who has always valued science and rationality starts practicing magic. At first, they might feel a bit of inner conflict or discomfort, was known as cognitive dissonance, because these new magical practices don't quite fit with their usual, more secular beliefs. Lerman suggests that over time, these individuals start to rationalize or make sense of this conflict. They might begin to think of magic as a different form of understanding the world that can coexist with science. This way, they blend their old rational views with their new magical practices, creating a mixed worldview where both can exist together. Onto the counter argument to that, we have Leon Festinger's theory of cognitive dissonance from 1957, which indicates that such dissonance might not always lead to a reconciliation of beliefs. Instead, individuals might choose to reject new information that conflicts with their existing beliefs, thereby maintaining their original belief system. Now, consider someone who, upon encountering ideas that clash with their existing beliefs, decides to dismiss these new ideas entirely. Leon Festinger's theory suggests that when people face such cognitive dissonance, they don't always find a way to reconcile the conflicting beliefs. Instead, they might outright reject the new information sometimes even pretend that it never happened, and therefore reject the validity of magic to keep their original beliefs, like a strict scientific worldview, intact. So in this case, rather than blending the two, they stick firmly to their original belief system, maintaining their usual way of understanding the word. The fourth aspect of the interpretative drift is embodied knowledge and practice. Lerman highlights the importance of physical practice and embodiment in adopting new beliefs. Through repeated participation in rituals, these practices become deeply ingrained, profoundly influencing the practitioner's perspective perception and understanding of reality. Think about learning to ride a bike. At first, it's just a concept. But as you physically practice, the experience becomes a part of you. Lerman suggests something similar happens with adopting new beliefs, especially in contexts like magic and witchcraft. When people actively participate in rituals like chanting, meditating, or spellcasting, these aren't just actions. They start to shape how individuals experience and understand the word. For instance, someone who regularly participates in meditation rituals may begin to genuinely feel a deeper spiritual connection, altering their perception of reality beyond the ritual itself. And to counter-argue that, we can apply Festinger's theory here. Um, and we could say that one could argue that despite engaging in embodied practices, individuals might still resist integrating beliefs that conflict with their pre-existing worldview, thus maintaining their original belief systems. Now, imagine someone who joins these rituals but has a strong pre-existing belief in a more scientific or in a different religion's view of the world. According to Festinger's theory, even if this person physically participates in the rituals, they might not let these experiences change their beliefs. They could go through the notions of the rituals without altering their fundamental understanding of reality. 
In other words, just because they are engaging in these practices doesn't mean they will automatically adopt the beliefs that go with them. They might continue to see the world through their original, more scientific lens, despite their involvement in the rituals. The fifth element of the interpretative drift is community and belonging. Lerman emphasizes the significant role of community in the process of interpretative drift. Being part of a group that shares and reinforces magical beliefs provides a supportive environment that helps to validate and normalize these beliefs. Picture joining a book club where everyone is enthusiastic about mystery novels. Soon, you might find yourself more interested in and convinced about the genre's appeal. Lerman argues that a similar phenomenon occurs with magical beliefs. Being part of a community like a coven or a group of practitioners where everyone shares and reinforces beliefs in magic creates a supportive environment. This group setting helps make these magical beliefs seem more normal and valid. For example, if you're in a group where everyone regularly discusses their experiences with spellcasting, you might start to see spellcasting as a more credible and effective practice. To counter-argue that, we can look at Robert Woodnow. He observes a trend towards individualism in modern spirituality. These suggest a shift from communal influence to personal experience in spiritual practices, proposing a different dynamic from the communal reinforcement highlighted by Lerman. Now, think about someone who prefers to read and explore mystery novels on their own, forming their opinions independently. Robert Wood now points out that in modern spirituality, there's a growing trend towards such individualism. This perspective suggests that people are increasingly finding spiritual meaning through personal experiences rather than through communal activities. So instead of a group influencing an individual's beliefs, it's more about personal exploration and individual experiences shaping one's spiritual practices. For instance, someone might develop a belief in magic through personal reading and experimentation rather than participation in a group setting and might seek out groups to reflect those individual beliefs instead of the other way around. In weaving together Lerman's arguments and the counter arguments, it becomes clear that the journey towards adopting new belief systems, particularly in the context of witchcraft and magic, is multifaceted. While Lerman's interpretative drift offers a framework emphasizing gradual change, communal influence and cognitive reconciliation, the counter-arguments introduce the possibilities of sudden belief changes, the significance of individual agency, and the resilience of pre-existing belief systems. This rich dialogue underscores the complexity of belief formation, reflecting the diverse and dynamic ways in which individuals navigate and construct their spiritual and magical words. This is it for today's video. If you watched until this point, leave me a pen emoji or a pencil. <laughs> now, my dear symposiast, this project of delivering free academic knowledge based on peer-reviewed academic scholarship can only exist thanks to your support. So if you have the means and want to support this project and offer it to everybody, please consider supporting my work with a one-off PayPal donation by joining memberships, my inner symposium on Patreon, checking out my services on drangelapuka.com and um, you know, you will find all the links in the description box, in the bio and in the cards and everywhere. I really appreciate any kind of help that you can give. And also don't forget to sign up for my newsletter. And if you like this video, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, activate the notification bell so that you will always be notified when I upload a new video, share this video around and let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you all so much for being here and stay tuned for all the academic fun. Bye for now. Today.